This is titled, The New Three-Fifths. In 1787, the Three-Fifths Compromise was created by the inability to recognize the humanity within black people. Now, the denial is legal. 60% black is all that's authorized for America's acceptability, so if I don't fit into respectability politics, or I don't speak quite right, or my attitude doesn't appeal to you, or my presence doesn't apologize, or my consciousness criticizes your constructs, then I'm too black for you. And that just won't do. So for you, I've got to choose which three I'll be, and which two I'll hide from you. One, they say you gotta dress to impress, but what they subtly stress is that I should conform, assimilate to the norm, so if I sag my pants too low, then I must not know how to respect myself, because people with wealth wear a belt. But maybe, just maybe, the unforgiving leather reminds us too much of our ancestors, or maybe we're wearing pants that don't fit because mama had to pay rent and we ain't too proud to wear hand-me-downs, or maybe, just like anyone else, there's a sense of comfort that's felt when you endorse the course of those who truly do support you. Two, they say we should speak proper English because what we speak is just gibberish. It's not possible that it's their understanding that's lacking. It must be our education that's slacking. So when I speak, I don't finish words or use proper terms or perfectly pronounce everything I spit out. So one day you may hear me say, bruh, I was tweaking. What was you on last weekend? Or on Sundays, you may hear my father pray, Lord, give me strength. Or on holidays, you may hear my granny say, give me some sugar, sugar. But for some reason, when we speak, there seems to be a belief that we must not know how the words are supposed to go. Three, they say we gotta be funny or focused on the money, or singing and dancing and running or catching because that kind of black's not a threat. There's no chance we'd attack if we're too busy being master's pet, so it's expected that we fit into that template because a black man reading or a black woman leading hasn't been allowed in so long we've been conditioned that it's wrong. Four, they say white is beautiful. Look at that nose, so excusable. Look at that hair, so elegant. This is an ideology we're expected to share. I'm supposed to look at my reflection and question why attractiveness has never been attached to us. But when I redefine what melanin really means, I'm able to redefine beauty. And that's when you'll see that our confidence has risen and it'll blur your vision as you find yourself unsettled and your ideologies disheveled. Five, they say we're better off than we used to be. Like we should be satisfied with a few pleasantries. We used to not even make it to trial, but at least now we're in court for the denial. See, it's expected that we preach peace and the gradual effect. Because if we pick up a piece and demand the system be checked, then we're seen as the source of this crooked course. See, I live my life and three-fifths, because I inherited this. So if I have one too many characteristics that white people can't sit with, then I'm that nigger. And we know niggers don't live long around here. So for you, I've gotta choose which three I'll be, and which two I'll hide from you. I'm negotiating my humanity my blackness must be compromised so that you will finally recognize me. Because at least with three-fifths, I know that I exist. Thank you.